In this tutorial, we're going to continue talking about Grasshopper user interface. So we're going to start with Canvas widgets. I'm going to maximize Grasshopper screen. So you would find Canvas widgets in the main menu bar under display and at the very end of the list, Canvas widgets. So almost all of them are turned on in my case. The bluish background represents that it's turned on. So let's start with the first one and it's Canvas. If I turn it off on the lower bottom right corner, you don't see the, can uh, the compass anymore. And I can turn it on again. Compass just shows you where your definition is. It could seem weird, but sometimes you can get lost. And then compass just points you where you need to go to find your definition. Under the compass, you can see a number, which is just a grasshopper version. It's um, now it's updated up automatically together with Rhino, so it's not an issue. It's it it used to be uh, important to know which version you're working with to make sure all of the components are working or that all the components are within Grasshopper. Let's go again to the Canvas widgets. Let's look at Align. So now I turned off Align. And what I do, I already created this short definition. I will go under Params, Input, grab a few more sliders, so just the number slider. Just connect them. The values doesn't matter for me now. And if I select now these three number sliders, I don't see any way of how I could conveniently organize them within the canvas. I can only do it by hand. So there is a way how to do it and in the canvas widgets menu on canvas widgets menu you can find this align right and now when i select my number sliders i can choose to align them this dialog opens up with a dashed line rectangle and some arrows so i can align my objects on canvas on to the left or to the right and so it's vertically and also horizontally maybe we can do it more dramatically somehow i'm going to be talking a bit more about this widget in another uh, tutorials regarding organizing our definitions Let's go to another one. It says markup or what's next. So over here on your lower le left corner, you can see some of the component icons which were previously used. So what markup widget does is that it's trying to predict the components that are most likely to be used by you. So if I pick this custom preview component, you can see that automatically color swatch component was also suggested. I personally don't use this widget, but some people might find it useful. So let's go to the next one. The profiler. I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so in this script, in this definition, it's not really useful let's go to some of the example tutorial files let's go to help tutorial files and number six adapted pattern within shape so with what we've used before so if we open this one you can see that 
I'm going to turn off the uh, profiler. So you can see that profiler gives this like a sub bar, a bar of information regarding how long it took for this component to compute. If I double click on it, it shows the percentage. This percentage is with regards to this whole file, this, this whole definition, but this whole file, right? So in this file, there's one component, point and curve, that takes up the third, more than a third of uh, all that com computation time. So sometimes it's even, so now it shows shown a bit in orange. It can even be shown in red, and that really signals you that um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be a problem, but let's say if your definition seems to be really slow and you want to just fix it, Profiler can point you to where the problem lies. Let's go back to our interface file. And let's discuss the last canvas widget, which is message balloons. So make sure you are turned it on. So for message balloons, let's go to params. Let's click and drag any parameter. So this yellow balloon over here is the, the message balloon. And it informs you, gives you some short information regarding what sort of errors or warnings are there. So if I hover over the balloon, it says that floating parameter point failed to collect data. It means it's empty. So we have discussed canvas widgets. Make sure you turn the ones you consider to be useful for you. And next, we're going to talk about Canvas Toolbar. So Canvas tool, Toolbar can be found under the, in a bar under the component palettes over here. It starts with an icon option for open a grasshopper file, save the current file. This percentage shows the zoom scale, which you want to choose. This is view the entire document. So if I get lost, I can use this one as well instead of compass. So the next one is add named view. I'm going to discuss these ones also more in detail in the next tutorial series for organizing our definitions. But just quickly, imagine we have a view. We can just click on the eye icon itself, name the view. It's very similar to Rhino named views. And then if I move somewhere, I can access the named view, view number one. Another feature here is create a sketch. You can just draw any shape that you want. If you if you right click on it, you can choose to simplify the shape, so apply some smoothing. And you can also load shapes from Rhino. I'm going to be talking about this also more in detail in another tutorial. So in the canvas toolbar, in the right corner of it, there's the set of the preview settings. These preview settings apply to rendered geometry in Rhino. So not the preview of component capsules or node nodes 
on canvas, but the actual geometry rendered within Rhino. Let's go to our already opened example file. It has a bit more geometry generated. And let's go through the preview settings. So this first one with a black eye says that don't preview any geometry. So if I click on it, I cannot see any geometry rendered from Grasshopper with the, within Rhino in Rhino window or in, in Rhino viewport. Draw wireframe preview geometry is the second one. Maybe it's less uh, relevant here since we don't have solids here. But it might be some cases where this uh, preview speeds up the preview process. The red one, the red icons, is for default preview. So just preview shaded geometry, and you can see that it's in red. The green, the half green one, is the one I really like to use since it only displays a, a preview of a selected component's geometry. So this way, going through the definition, you can check what component generates what geometry if it generates any geometry so this is very useful for analyzing the definition so the next one is document preview settings by default when you open when you open rhino the normal preview of geometry is the let me just cancel and turn the default preview so the default normal preview of turned on geometry is reddish and the selected one is green with some transparency you can change here the colors if you like And changing it in here uh, changes this file, but it doesn't change. So it changed this particular file, but doesn't change over um, the, the Grasshopper default or your custom default settings. If you want to change, let's do something like this. So if you want to change your custom file colors to be default grasshopper colors, you would have to go under File, Preferences, and select Document Materials and drag, drag it to Default Template Material. But I do not suggest to do that, especially if you're a beginner. And the last feature is for Preview Mesh Quality. We don't have complex geometry here, so let's go back to our interface file. This feature is for smooth curved surfaces usually. Um, sometimes setting a lower quality can help to increase the speed for rendering the geometry preview in Rhino, but it doesn't change the geometry itself. So even though sometimes it might seem edgy, try baking it, and we're going to talk about baking later, and you would see that ge geometry itself is smooth. So these settings are just a preview to speed up your process for creating the definition. So this is it for Canvas widgets and Canvas toolbar. See you in the next one.